So this is a problem from the 2018 AP Calc BC exam. Uh, it's problem number five. It's a non-calculator question that deals with some polar curves. And so we've got two polar curves graphed. Uh, the one is R equals four. So that's the circle with constant radius of four. And then we've got this other curve, three plus two cosine of theta, which graphs the limosome that you see along with the curve. Um, they were nice enough to provide us with the intersections here, right? So the intersection up here of the two polar curves is at a theta value of pi by three. And then the intersection that you see down here is at a theta value of five pi by three. Uh, R is the shaded region. Now I've already kind of done some highlighting over top of these graphs, so it might look a little different. So um, R is what you see right here that's inside the circle, but then outside of the limosome. And so we're looking to find an expression involving an integral for the area of R. So what I thought is I thought, well, I can basically find all of the area inside this portion of the circle or find the area of that sector of the circle. And then what I can do is I can subtract off the area that I highlighted over here in red, which is the area that's inside the limosome between these two radii that I've drawn. And so if I find the area inside the circle and then subtract off the area that I don't want because it's not part of the shaded region that's included inside the limosome, I'm going to have my result. And so my limits of integration on each of the integrals will be pi by 3, right at this radius right here, theta is pi by 3, and then theta has to range to 5 pi by 3. That's regardless of whether or not we're traveling around the circle like I just did, or if we're traveling around the limosome, theta is still ranging from 0 to 5 pi by 3. But inside of each integral we need the formula for the area of a sector uh, so the area of a sector is one half r squared times the change in the in the angle uh, and in this case when we're building the integral already the change in the angle is going to be d theta so i have one half r squared d theta which will give me the area that you see shaded in yellow right here uh, the area of that sector of the circle and then if i apply the same idea but to the equation of the limosome I'm going to have one half r squared d, and that'll be the expression that you need to find the area of r. Part B asks us for the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the limosome at the value of pi by 2. So at the value of pi by 2, we can kind of eyeball the graph and assume that this is where theta is going to be pi by 2, as long as we're not dealing with negative radii or anything like that. Uh, and so you can kind of envision right now that it's going to be kind of a you know medium positive slope, not real steep, not real level. And the way that we find the slope of that tangent line is we still graph this in the coordinate plane, right? Y on this axis, X on this axis. So we still need to find the rate of change of Y with respect to X. And we need to evaluate that rate of change at pi by 2. And so if you've dealt with polar coordinates before, you're going to find the value of dy dx by taking dy d theta and then dividing by dx d theta at the appropriate value of theta. Now, I already have the answer specified right here. The answer is 2 thirds, but I didn't have that answer right away. I had to do a lot of work down here, bottom of the screen, in order to find it. And so the relationship between x, r, and theta uh, for any polar curve is that x is equal to r cosine of theta and then similarly y is equal to r sine of theta. So what I had to do is I had to replace the r with the specific formula for r for the curve that we're considering right now which was 3 plus 2 cosine of theta. I did that with my relationship between x, r, and theta as well as my relationship between y, r, and theta. I then had to find dx d theta and the value of dx d theta is eventually going to go into the denominator here. So I had to, I used a product rule for the derivative of this. So you can kind of see the components of my product rule, derivative of the first, original second, plus original first, derivative of the second. I evaluated that at pi by 2. So you see it in red here, my calculation. So I was kind of thinking about the unit circle. All right, well, if I put pi by 2 here, sine of pi by 2 is 1. Cosine of pi by 2 is 0. Cosine of pi by 2 is 0. Sine of pi by 2 is, is 1. And that has to be negative. And then if you simplify this a little bit, which you technically don't have to do in a non-calculator for your response question, I could have just taken this expression right here, and I could have tossed it into the denominator in place of 
uh, dx d theta, evaluated at pi by 2. I did simplify it. I went clear to a negative 3. Uh, and I chose to do that only because it didn't seem like it was that difficult to simplify. And we already kind of analyzed up here that, that we should end up with a, a kind of a, a medium positive slope. So I wanted to be able to use that as, as a way to kind of gauge the validity of the answer that I eventually end up with. I did the same thing with my relationship between y and theta. I took the derivative of this with respect to theta, another product rule, derivative of the first, original second, plus original first, derivative of the second. Once again, I evaluated all of these at pi by three, excuse me, pi by 2, we'll get to pi by 3 in part C, uh, evaluated these at pi by 2, so sine of pi by 2, 1, sine of pi by 2, cosine of pi by 2, 0, cosine of pi by 2, 0, and once again, I did simplify that a little bit, pretty easy to simplify to a negative 2, and if I take dy d theta divided by dx d theta, I get negative 2 divided by negative 3, which simplifies to 2 over 3, which kind of jives with what we were talking about a minute ago when we were looking at this graph. And in the final part of this, part C talks about a particle that's moving along a stretch of this polar curve and it is going to be only moving along the stretch from 0 to pi by 2. So I guess it's only moving along this graph from right here to right here, right? So it's moving along this stretch of the limosome. Particle moves in a way such that the distance between the particle and the origin increases at a constant rate of three units per second. So the distance between the particle and the origin is always going to be specified by r. And if we're talking about the rate of change of r with respect to time, right, units per second, that's the value of tr dt. And since it's increasing, I had that assigned as a positive rate. What they ask us to find is they ask us to find the rate at which the angle theta changes, also with respect to time, at the instant when the position of the particle is at a theta value of pi by 3 does ask us to indicate units of measure. So I'm looking for d theta dt evaluated at the instant time with theta is equal to pi by 3. So I've got this relationship between r and theta established up here and what I want is I want to generate a dr dt and a d theta dt. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of that equation with respect to t. That'll give me a dr dt on the left and then on the right-hand side, the derivative of 3 with respect to t is 0, so that goes away. Copy the 2 into the derivative. Derivative of cosine of theta is negative sine of theta, but because theta changes over time, because it's a function of t, I have to use implicit differentiation, finish off a little chain rule right there, multiply by the derivative of theta with respect to t. I now have the ability to plug 3 in place of dr dt, plug pi by 3, in place of this theta right here. I'm looking to find d theta dt. So I, I evaluated sine of pi by 3. I got square root of 3 over 2 for that. These 2's cancel. So I have 3 equals negative root 3 dr, d theta dt. So if I solve that for d theta dt, I'm simply going to divide by negative root 3. I'm going to end up with this value. Because that's the rate of change of an angle, you're going to have the units in the numerator being radians, and it's the rate of change of the angle over time, and time is being measured in seconds. So our units there are radians per second.